Hey Zip friend, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maylene Call from Mrs. Call's Cambers. If you're new here, I am a kindergarten teacher in Northern California. It is May, it is the end of the year. It's Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, I got <laughs> I got a candy bar this morning, hold on. To be honest, I don't know if any of my parents know that it's Teacher Appreciation Week. I don't even know if this little girl brought this in because it's Teacher Appreciation Week or because she just wanted to bring it to me. Um, but it was funny because she like went up to me and she's like, Miss Call, I have something for you. And she handed it to me and then she ran away. Like she didn't want to deal with the whole, thank you so much. I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> Anyways, today was a whirlwind of a day. I woke up in the best mood, like the best mood. I don't know if it's just summer fever for me, but I'm like ready to end the year to get it done. It came in best mood ever. And then we get to my planning time, which keep in mind, I did not plan for this week until after school, <laughs> which is currently now. So I knew I had a lot to do this morning. I get here, my computer did not connect to the internet for 53 minutes. I was turning it on, turning it off, didn't work. My projector didn't work. It didn't work until two minutes before the kids got in. So I'm like flustered because I couldn't get anything done during my planning. Um, but that ended up being pretty okay. I did have to work a little bit through lunch, but it just, it was, it had to happen. Also, I came in and some of our plants were like fried. Um, I think most of them have bounced back, but uh, yeah. So I came in in a great mood and everything else was just not working in my favor. As far as what we're doing, um, it is the end of the year. We have not even four weeks of school left. So I'm taking it down in terms of content. We're not learning a whole bunch of new content. Really, we just need to do 3D shapes and math. <laughs> so I have to do that. But um, as far as centers go, normally you guys see, I do my center folders. If you're new here, please check out all of my other vlogs. I explain it. I have an Instagram post explaining it. Normally I give them something to do in word work, something to do in writing that's focused on like our phonics skill. This week, I really just wanted them to focus on writing, like just writing sentences. So I put one of our writing superstar papers, which I will show you. I put one of these papers in there center folder and then for word work I just put one of my like sight word activities so rainbow words in it for this week because I just want them writing those sight words so just one of these but I put it in their center folder and I was like after you get that done in word work free choice in word work do whatever you want in word work explore some of the things you haven't really explored yet and then in writing I said the same exact thing so for their writing superstar paper let me show you I told them that I wanted them to write a May sentence basically so I updated all of our May pictures and then we of course have our sentence starters up here so they have no excuse not to write something um, and they did really really well with it basically I just want centers to be more just relaxed for the end of the year I really want them to get into things that they haven't done yet um, so while they were in centers today I finished up all of my testing I'm completely done which means I can do report cards early so I don't have to stress over it later but I had time to pull a couple of kids to my back table and over the weekend, I invested in a couple of things, which I'm gonna show you here. We're gonna do a little mini classroom haul because I have no self-control. Okay, the first thing I got are these poppers and I pulled them out and I've seen them all over Instagram, all over TikTok. And you just basically, you can do it by sound or syllable, d, a, g, and they can press it down for each word um, or for each sound. And I pulled these out and I swear the whole class just like knew. They were like, Miss Call, Miss Call, how, where did you get those? And I was like, I got them from Amazon. Do you know what they are? And they were like, those are poppers. So they're obsessed with these. Um, I had a couple of kids come to my back table. They were so engaged, so engaged. They love these. Um, so I wish I had bought them sooner. Truly do. We use the lights, the puck lights. You guys have seen me post about them on Instagram. But like this is great because it's individual. I'll link the ones that I bought because I made sure <laughs> that I was getting some that were actually good quality because some of them are really flimsy and I didn't want that. Um, so these are like very, it's hard to tell. They're very good quality, like it's thick. And I got two packs, so I have six of them because the most kids that I'll pull at my small group table is six. So I got those. The other thing I got, <laughs> that they are just so excited for. I was not expecting this. Also a TikTok purchase, <laughs> this bad boy. So there's lowercase letters, uppercase letters. I have no idea who I saw this on TikTok from. I am so sorry. Um, Cause I don't think I even saved it. I was just like, oh, that's interesting. And then like a week later I looked it up on Amazon and I was like, oh, 20 bucks. That's kind of expensive. But now I'm like, I need to buy some more of these cause my kids loved it. So basically, these little balls are magnetic 
and they push down. Take your magnetic pen and you trace. And when I showed them this morning, because whenever I introduce something to centers, I'll usually show it whole group um, and have someone like come up and practice it. They were excited. Even my kids who like know all of their letters chose this during free choice. Like during free choice, they were like wanting to play with it. And I was like, okay, might need to get a, a couple more of these because they love them. I bought those and then I bought just some simple go fish alphabet cards. Like they have uppercase and lowercase letters on them. And I think they have like animals. Um, and I got that. And then the other thing I got, which I probably, you probably won't see in this vlog, but I'm going to mention it in case, you know, you might be in college student teaching, or maybe you want to buy stuff for your future classroom or make stuff. Here's my idea. I bought, guess who? This I think is the kid's version. It said kid, ver kid version on it. Um, and I'm going to take out the picture cards and I'm going to put letters and then they can just be like oh do you, does your letter say ah does your letter say b i don't know if you have a better idea <laughs> let me know because i could do cbc words but like i'm in kindergarten and i don't really want to change them out i could get another one and do cbc words no i think i just want to do letters but i don't know if you have a better idea let me know because there's not enough spots for every letter so i'm gonna leave out x because they all know x and i'm gonna put q and u together because it says qu together um that's enough for all the pieces. Anyways, I thought it would be fun to just like put a letter on each one and then they can pick a letter and then just do the sounds and then, you know, pra practice is fun, right? I don't know if that'll make it to my classroom this year, <laughs> honestly, but I just wanted to share it with you because I bought it. So those are some things that I got. Um, that's our new center routine, very chill. Really just want them to work on those foundational skills. Oh, our creative writing today went so well. We are doing creative writing and last week was rough um their creative writing was it was it was bad <laughs> wasn't it, it wasn't their best work and i even told like one of the teachers on my team was like i just feel like this time you know we're starting a new writing things are kind of crazy i think next week's will be better and it's so much better already all we've done is plan out let me show you some of their pictures they've done such a so last time we did it, I feel like they sh like really struggled with setting their story up and that's maybe why they had such a hard time later on. I also didn't pull small groups, which I will be doing this week. Um, here's one of our pictures. It's about soccer, so beginning, middle, and end. And I love the little details in the jersey. That's so cute, little jersey numbers. Here's another one, beginning, middle, and end. Beginning, middle, end. I thought this one was really creative. It's about a tornado. So good, right? If you teach kindergarten, you you know. Anyways, I'm really excited for their stories. Um, and I felt like they have a better grip on it this week, which is good, that's what we want. I think that's about all I'm gonna share with you guys today. I'll catch up with you guys later. I'm gonna go home, work out, eat dinner, all that fun stuff. And yeah, just enjoy, enjoy the rest of my Monday. Good morning, today is Tuesday. It's Teacher Appreciation Day. I tried to go out of my comfort zone with the dress that I'm wearing. I'll show you guys later, tell me what you think. I'm trying to pull it off. I'm trying to be that girl. I just, I don't know. I think it's cute though. Anyways, I did something today that I've never ever done before. My Instagram post had a Starbucks um, scan code for people to like buy a drink this morning. And it was so fun. Also nerve wracking for me because I'm like trying to keep an eye on it and I'm trying to like space out the reloads so that like people can use it and it just doesn't get like used super quick that was definitely fun it's something that i've never done before and the only reason that i can do it is because you guys are watching my videos you're buying my t-shirts on etsy and so i like to give back to you guys whenever i can um i'm gonna go in and start my day hopefully hopefully it's a good one it's after school um not friday even though it feels like friday it's still tuesday teacher appreciation day so interesting because this is now the second school i've worked at my first school like we had things for teacher appreciation day this school nothing i'm just like every person i saw today i was like happy teacher appreciation day and they were like happy teacher appreciation day i did bake cookies for everybody last friday i feel like i should go home and do something again tonight to do that but to just kind of like I don't know. I think teacher appreciation day is, is really important. Um, of course, I'm a teacher, so that's why I feel that way. But anyways, today was a super good day. Uh, we started off and we did something new. So today, because it's teacher appreciation day, there are a bunch of like TPT sales. So I bought a couple of things. One of the things I got is a kindergarten readiness 
handbook that I'm gonna hopefully get to the kids who are coming into kindergarten for me so I'm gonna give it to them and a while ago I purchased like a kindergarten summer handbook to like get them ready for first grade so I'm gonna bind those and you'll see that probably in a later video and then the other thing I got was a CVCE pack for my friend Kayla move mountains in kindergarten and so she has these write the rooms in them for CVCE word I printed the little recording she usually like they're numbered and then the cards have a number on them I took a screenshot of the cards that she has and I just put them in my PowerPoint and I taught them because we haven't done a write the room this year because we haven't been in person that long and I taught them to look for the number find the number on their paper and I did them out of order because whenever they're finding them in the room they're not going to be in order so I made sure to do that um, so there's the number and then we talked about like what it was and then we wrote it together and I had them just check it and I underlined the skill so we did about 10 of those that's what that looks like but that's from Kayla and I like to do that with a lot of the resources that I buy online that are paper like I'll just put <laughs> screenshots of them in my PowerPoint and I can teach with it and it makes a lot of sense for the kids. So that's just one little tip I have for you. So we did that. We did some CBCE reading fluency just because that's the skill we're working on right now. And then for small groups today, I actually got to pull small groups because like I said yesterday, I'm finally done with testing and my kids once again are obsessed with these things. Like I don't know, I don't know what the magic is, but they, they're obsessed with these little poppers. So that's good to know. It was also really nice because I'm not doing running records on every single one of my students this year. My school doesn't really have us do running records. Um, I do it for my kids, ones who are more up there, but like for the other ones, I'm just like reading with them because um, I know about what level they're on, but I haven't done like a full running record on them. But it was nice because I could see, like even if it's just a little growth, it's, it's very satisfying to see. And then for writing, we started working on our first page and I told you guys yesterday our writing is gonna be so much better this week and I pulled small groups today. It was really tight. 35 minutes is cutting it close to do like a little mini lesson and then try to meet with like all my kids, but we're, we're making it work. That's one of the things that I really wanna like nail down for next year is my writing time block. So again, if you have, if you have something that works for you, especially if you're kinder, cause I had something that worked in first grade but they are more independent than kinder is. So usually I'll have the other students like work on their picture. I kind of think it'd be nice to have like writing buddies, like pairing some of my, I don't wanna say higher, some of my kids who are more skilled at writing with some of my kids who need a little bit extra help, but I'm scared that like the kids, they would like do the work for them. I don't know, we'll think about it. Still teaching the healthy eating curriculum because I really like it and every day I'm just like, wow, this is great. This is age appropriate. It's working for the kids. Like today we had like this little concentration memory game. So they had a picture of like a food and then like the animal or place that it comes from on the farm and they cut out all their pictures and you play like a memory game and they were very excited about it. So our read aloud this week is Una and I do not have the physical copy yet because Amazon one day delivery was not one day delivery, but I'll show you. We did these little character setting flip books. Not, not the greatest color. Kind of Characters, I think that's Otto, the, her little otter friend. And that might be her and the setting is like the ocean. Some of them came out kind of good, I think. So like these, and I still am using the pack from Primary Scouts. It's where I get like all of my read aloud things apparently when I'm teaching kindergarten. But yeah, that was our day. I did tell my kids that we have something kind of exciting for math this week because I just, I guess I couldn't keep it to myself. So yeah, trying to keep it short for you guys in this vlog. Watch it still be like an hour long. I don't know, I'm trying. I just know with me and it being the end of the year and I'm just tired, it's just, it's just a lot, you know? If you are here, make sure you are subscribed. The next video that's gonna come out is a video on like end of the year activity. So I'm gonna probably prep for all that this weekend. I'm gonna film it, it's gonna be so much fun. Also, do you wanna hear something so funny? Uh, today at Guided Reading, I ran out of my Skittles. I had an extra bag in the back in my closet. So I grabbed it and in the middle of centers, I didn't even think twice about it. I filled the Skittles container. The whole room goes, <gasps> like they got so excited. That's kindergarten for you. <laughs> Plant update. They're doing fine. I didn't kill them. Like this one, kind of struggling a little bit, but she's okay. They're great. I thought I, totally thought I killed them this weekend, but I've just been <laughs> missing <laughs> as much as I can. You know, it's funny. I thought they would all try to like touch this, but they totally leave it alone. 
Also, here's the dress that I got from Target. She has pockets, which is, which is nice. We love that. I don't know. I've gotten compliments from kids and adults today, but I'm still like, does it actually look cute? Cause I feel like it's kind of like this, but maybe that's just like the look. I don't know. I do feel kind of cute though. So that's what matters, right? Okay. Also, you can kind of see that my shorts are blue. Love that for me. <laughs> I do want to say though, if you have a place where you buy dresses that have like this style where it's got like the ruffles like that, give me a recommendation. By the way, this dress is from Target. <laughs> Still Tuesday because I forgot to tell you something that I don't want to forget to tell you tomorrow. If you've seen any of my vlogs this year, you know I have a very special friend who needs a lot of help, like in school, outside of school. Luckily, I think I mentioned this very briefly, luckily this student has gotten some help from his pediatrician, which is great. Um, but this student in particular always struggles with story time and he just, he just never, whenever he, it's story time, he just breaks down tears, can never do it. And I let my kids lay down sometimes. I don't always make them like sit on their bottoms. Like I let them get comfortable. And then when it's time to like answer questions, I have them like sit up and talk to me. But this student just struggles. And I was talking to my admin about it. And you know, I explained that our schedule is absolutely content break, content break, content break, content break. And then when we get to the end of the day, we have a read aloud and then we just go into math because I can only fit like so many breaks. I try to do go noodles and stuff too in between when we don't have like an actual full break. I was like, he really struggles like around this time and I think it's because he knows like he doesn't have any more play time and that's what he wants to do. He wants to play. He doesn't really want to do schoolwork. And he was like, well, what if you just like give him something to do and just let him listen? And I was like, why didn't I think of that? Like that's genius. Sometimes, you know, you are a teacher, you are worrying about so many things, so many students, you don't think of like the simplest solution. Cause for this student in particular, when he's on the carpet, the fidgets don't really help him. Like he, it doesn't work for him. I've tried that. But today I pulled him aside and I was like, you know, I think whenever we come in for story time, you can sit at this table and you can do one of our STEM bins and you can just listen. Do you think you can listen and work on a STEM bin for me? And he was like, yes, I can do that. And he did and it was, amazing so he like could see everything that we were doing he could hear everything and there were times when i was talking to the students and he was like mouthing the answers like i could tell he was totally paying attention it was just wonderful because he does have the kind of brain where he can listen and absorb something while he's doing another task and it helped him so so much just another one of those moments where i was like wow you know, if I had only thought of this so much sooner, like with testing ESGI, like giving my kids a fidget toy while they tested, totally changed the game. I just, yeah, I just wanted to share in case, you know, you have one of those students and the rest of my class, every now and then I have to explain, like, yes, this student is gonna be doing something else, but it's to help them focus because fair does not mean everybody gets the same thing. Fair means everybody gets what they need to be successful, so. I just wanted to share that with you guys because it worked and it was such a victory today with him. Such a victory. So I wanted to end on that note. Okay, we made it to the end of the day. I am completely <laughs> and utterly exhausted. It's like five o'clock, so I really need to go, but I'll share my day with you. So start off in the morning full of energy. It was great was a little bit late, but that's okay. But I'm seeing my energy was at like a hundred. Like I got here, I was on the playground with them playing queen princess. They had a ball with that. And then we were okay. And we had our ag day today. So high schoolers came into our classroom and we talked about how are we gonna be respectful listeners to them. And they did such a good job. And it's always hit or miss whenever someone else comes to your classroom. Like your kid's behavior could either be super on point or you can just look at them like, who are you children? Like, what are you doing? They were amazing. They got to do a little activity where they took like a lima bean and put it in a paper towel and put that outside in a baggie. And they thought that was really cool. Um, and they were troopers because it was a little long for them, but they, they stuck through it. And then we came back to centers. That went fine. They went to lunch and they came back completely different kids. And by then, my energy went from like level 100 to like a four, like a four. It was also one of those days where it's like, it feels like we have so much to do that we just get nothing done. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like everything we're doing is kind of out of our normal routine and then they're just thrown off. So after lunch, we did our writing and I asked you guys yesterday if you had any tips for your writing and today it honestly did go better. I think just because 
we don't do writing groups every single week. It's kind of difficult for them to kind of understand <laughs> like they need to wait for their group to be called and at this point I'm not calling my highs group to my table and working with them I'm letting them work independently and then checking in with them at the end so really my three other groups I'm trying to meet with but it's it's still just a long block of time and I don't really know how else to break it up. After writing, we had to practice a Christmas song. Our school is doing kind of like a Christmas in May theme, and I'm not like 100% sure on the logistics of it, but I was told that kindergarten was going to be singing the intro for All I Want for Christmas is You, which wonderful song. It's been stuck in my head all day, and my kids had really a fun time trying to learn the lyrics to the beginning of the song. But again, one of those things where it's just like, out of our norm and they were crazy and then I couldn't bring them back and then after that we did our read aloud which is Una which I actually finally got the book so here it is we're on day three of reading it and I absolutely love that there are so many people out there who have read alouds on YouTube but there is something so different about reading it to my class they were ten times more engaged and I just have like a way of reading that I feel like is very accessible to kindergartners um, and all throughout our story today we were making connections to other books that we've read recently so like Una rescued her best friend the otter from a an oyster net and I was like oh does that remind you of a book that we read recently which Rocket says clean up this book right here well it's there the anchor chart is there Rocket finds a turtle that is stuck in like a soda can plastic. They made that connection. And then later on in the book, Una talks about how she can hear the whale sing. And I was like, can you make a connection to a book that we've read? And they said 52, which I think is right up there. And they were like, what if, what if the whale in this book was 52? And they were going on and on about how cool it would be if the stories could like connect. And I was like, oh, this is just so much fun. But the other side to that is, it takes us so long to just like get into the swing of reading. And I think it's because I moved a read aloud to the end of the day. It's more relaxing, but their attention is also a little bit scattered at the end of the day. So I don't know. There's a couple things I need to rethink for my schedule next year. I really like having this at the end of the day because it's simple, it's easy, it's the same every week, but they just wanna talk the whole time, the whole time. And then, we did our writing to go with it, which is, if you lived in the ocean, what sea creature would you be? Let me show you my wonderful pictures. Okay, here's the anchor chart. Um, again, this is phonetic spelling, so this is kind of just what we came up with. Sight word, um, mommy E is a skill we're learning. We know SH says shh, okay. So here's my shark, my crab, my mermaid, my starfish. It was going great. And then we got to the dolphin and they made fun of me so bad. And then the seahorse, I think I redeemed myself. That was our whole day. That's it, that's all we did. And yet it still felt like the longest day ever because they were just so chatty, which is interesting because like yesterday, I feel like it was totally fine today. Super chatty, I had no idea what was going on. And then when we were doing that writing over there that I showed you just now, they acted like they've never written anything in their life. Like they had a sentence starter, all they had to do was copy the sentence starter and pick an animal and then draw a picture. It took us, I'm not kidding, like 30 minutes. We did not even make it to math. Did not even make it. I also had a student today who was during free choice on their computer and they were at the standing table, which is totally fine, but they didn't even realize that they like used the bathroom on themselves. Did not even realize it. So it was craziness, but luckily no like behavior issues or anything. Like it was a normal day in the sense of that I didn't have to do any like extreme classroom management in terms of behavior. It was just more so the talking. And I think it caught me so off guard that I just didn't handle it very well. So next, so tomorrow should be much better. But I have to share something really exciting with you. A robot and it's called M-Tiny. I played with it today after school with my team teacher who is right next door. And it was the cutest thing ever. I wanna break it down and show you how it works. I also have a code for you, it's linked on Amazon. This is only like $99 regularly priced. And I'm sitting here like, wow, 
This thing is impressive. I know for a fact that my first graders would have adored this. This would be a great gift if you know someone who's like five, six, seven, maybe even eight. My kids are going to love this and I can't wait to share it with you. I don't have time today though because like I said, it's five o'clock, so I need to go. But I did wanna come on here and share my excitement with you. So I'll turn it on, give you a little sneak peek. Hi! <laughs> my mess. <laughs> Today was a whirlwind of a day. First of all, it's Thursday. Um, definitely felt like a Friday, partly because I did push some of our activities that we were gonna do Friday. I kind of pushed them to today because some of my kids aren't gonna be here tomorrow. Um, the one thing I couldn't move was our little virtual field trip as part of that healthy eating curriculum that I'm doing. And one of my kids is actually super bummed about it. Like he almost started crying because he was gonna miss it. And I was like, oh, sorry, I didn't know you weren't gonna be here tomorrow. But uh, today was just one of those days where I really felt like a kindergarten teacher because we just did, I don't know, it was just like a super fun day, if that makes sense. And it also definitely felt like the end of the year. <sighs> I have a funny quote to share with you from this morning. I need to get better about writing down some of the funny quotes that my kids say because sometimes they just talk to me and I'm like, you're hilarious. Like you are so funny. I think I should like write a book just of all the kindergarten quotes. First thing that I hear when I get here, <clears throat> Miss Cole, can I tell you something? Yeah, sure. Ants have to stay outside all summer and ants should stay in their ant holes because they're gross. <laughs> just thought that was so funny. I have this book that I wanna to read to them called Hey Little Ant. Let me show you really quick. It's this book right here, super cute. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that my college professor showed me this book. If you went to UTC, Dr. Sanifer, she's my favorite. Um, but here's a little review. And it's like the ant is like telling the story from his perspective. He doesn't wanna get squished, but. It's really great. I'm pretty sure that my professor in college showed me this book, but I think I need to read it to them because all of a sudden they're like so interested in ants and I haven't used that book yet. So <sighs> another big, big win for today was during centers, I got to pull my reading groups, like, like full on reading groups today. They worked so well in their centers. Actually the first like five minutes they were loud and crazy and I put up I said hands on top and they say everybody stop and they do this and I just went ahead and put one of these cookies up there which means that they they didn't do a good job in centers and I didn't tell them that they would get a chance to change it but they totally changed their behavior of course right and then at the very end I surprised them and I gave them a smart cookie and they were very excited about that because they did a killer job in centers they did so well and also you guys know that teaching guide and reading is like my favorite thing in the world I am making a video for you guys on small groups or just some ideas that you can use but it's the end of the year and it's just so crazy right now and I think it'd be a great kind of like summer series maybe to watch so let me know what you think about that rather than just one video that's like kind of long if you kind of want like a little series not like a this is exactly how you need to do it but just like ideas and things related to like guided reading let me know after lunch we went into writing and this is where things kind of started to fall apart a little bit they did good for like 15 minutes and i was pulling my writing groups and then all of a sudden they're just loud and playing and crazy and i literally had them all stop and go to the carpet and i finished my last writing group and had them every other person in the class sitting quietly on the carpet while I sat back here and finished my writing group. I was like, it is not fair to these friends who have been waiting patiently for their turn for you guys to be so loud that I have to scream for them to hear me at my table. That is not fair to them. Um, and so they apologized. We did our science, which is our healthy eating curriculum. And what we did today kind of just set us up for our virtual field trip tomorrow. After that, we went to snack and then I realized two of my kids were not gonna be here tomorrow. So I was like, okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and do this painting idea that I had today instead of tomorrow. And they came out super cute. I only have a couple of them because I tried to send them home the end of the day was a whirlwind. So here's what some of their art pieces that I still have looked like. And basically I called them all to my back table. I had it all set up um, and I took a piece of paper and I drew three straight lines across and I directed them to do the whole thing. If you wanna know exactly how I did it, you can check my Instagram post right here. And then that literally took probably an hour because I was doing a small group. And if I had thought about it, I would have just had the other teacher that's in here with me do a small group and I do a small group and we could have just done it. But my kids had like an hour of free choice time and it went, it was fine, it was great. They were, they were loving it. So then after free choice, this is my little like secret fun tip that I wanna share with you guys. You know the secret trash, mystery trash, like you find a piece of like mystery trash and they have to clean up and try to find it and if they find it, they 
win or something. Um, well, I started playing like imposter trash or Among Us trash. Basically, I put on an Among Us timer on the board and I'm like, there is an imposter among us. And then they have to clean up really quickly and like try to find the imposter. And then I put up the like emergency meeting and I call them all over and I tell them if they found it or if they didn't found it and they live for it, they love it. So if you already do secret trash or mystery trash, try this because I think they'll love it. I also showed this to you guys yesterday. This is our little robot and I was like, you know what? I just wanna give them a demonstration of it. I wanna give them a demonstration. I want to give them a demonstration. I just wanted to give them like a demonstration of it and kind of show them how it worked. And it was literally the last like 10 minutes of school. Um, that way tomorrow I can kind of pull them and like have them explore it a little bit more. They freaked out. They loved it so much and I knew they would. And so basically um, I pulled it out and I was like, we need to name it. And then we decided on the name Taco, which I think is super cute. It was either going to be Taco or Jimmy. And we went with taco. But I pulled all of its pieces out and I kind of walked them through how to do it and they were just absolutely fascinated. So I feel like that's gonna be like one of the big things I do with them tomorrow. Like I think we're just gonna spend like an hour playing with it and having fun. As I was giving them the demonstration in the last 10 minutes of class, they start calling for dismissal and I'm like, okay, bye, see you tomorrow. And then what did they not grab on the way out? Those first few kids, they're painting and they took home their flowers and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'm like running and struggling to try to get everybody their things and it was just crazy. And then after school, I curled up in a ball and now I'm going to go take pictures with my friend who teaches next door because she's starting a teacher Instagram and you should go follow her. This is her Instagram. I'm very excited, but that is everything for today. If you have questions about anything that I talk about or you want me to go more into detail, leave me a comment. A lot of you guys message me on Instagram and you'll ask me questions and I'm like, that's a great question for the comment section because so many people have asked me that question already in my DM. So I love that you guys DM me with the questions, but if it's about the vlog, leave me in the comment section helps other people because everybody can kind of see it and then other teachers can answer that question too. I'm gonna go <laughs> and hang out with you guys tomorrow. Hey, sweet friends, it's Friday today was quite the day. I started off by waking up this morning pretty early for a Saturday. And then I was looking on Instagram and one of my friends, Kayla, was posting how she was buying coffee for her team. And I was like, that's weird. And I was like, why is she in her classroom? And then I realized it was not Saturday. It was Friday. And I was thinking in my head, oh, I can go back to sleep. I have a few more hours because I woke up at like six o'clock still. Did not set any alarms last night. Totally had the impression that today was gonna be Saturday. So luckily, <laughs> I made it to school just fine, even earlier than I did yesterday. As a matter of fact, John also brought me coffee on his way home from work since he's working night. So that was great. But our day, I feel like I'm just ending every day feeling so exhausted. Just like totally, completely, utterly exhausted. My kids' behavior has not been awesome. They've just been in this like summer mood. We've been doing so many different things. Our schedule has flip flopped a little bit, which might be part of it. But then there's also other things that I'm like, this has never been acceptable for you to put your hands on someone has never been acceptable. So it's just been a lot for the end of the year. We finished our creative writing pieces today. They did their cover today. And I said, when you're done, bring it to me to staple. I have 20 packs of writing to staple. I was not looking at their covers. So I stapled this person's cover without looking at it. And when I saw it today after school, I died laughing, absolutely died because I feel like it's so just reminiscent of me. So like, you know, last year my vlogs, my E was missing in like every video. This year it's the O. Well, let me, let me show you this student's creative writing. Um, it's called Me and Mrs. Call. He wrote a story about us. Is that not the funniest thing that you have ever seen? I thought it was so funny because there's two little tiny pieces of command, like tape command strips, and he drew those in his picture. And I thought that was hilarious. So then I'll just show you the pictures. It says, first Miss Call waved to us. We have our little morning meeting that I put on the board and I think this is our schedule. Next Miss Call tells us it was snack time and there's the snack and recess that I display for them. My little Darla buns, so cute, the leaf rug, right? And then this one cracks me up. Last I left. And there he is leaving with the, with the choice sign missing the letter O. And what's even funnier is that, look what I brought today to hang up the O. And I was gonna hang it up before school, but I just, I didn't have time. So I might do that today before I leave. 
things like that. Sometimes teaching kindergarten is, is pretty fun, but the rest of the day today was a hot mess. Here's some more beautiful art <laughs> that I got today. <laughs> Love that for me. Oh, we also took a little trip to the dairy farm. It was our virtual field trip. Um, they talked a lot about the dairy cows and kind of like what they do with the dairy cows. And then they talked about like the five food groups. Um, and I felt like it, like it was probably a little bit long for my kids because it was like 40, 45 minutes. So after like 15 minutes, they were like, Miss Call. And I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. They showed them like how they milk it. They put up a few like questions for the kids and like tried to get them engaged. Um, but they also have this option where you can like have a cow brought to your school. I think it's just if you live in California, um, but I thought that was pretty cool. So I wanna try to do that next year. I feel like I've done enough like talking and explaining for the week. So I wanna show you our new robot that we named Taco. So once again, this isn't sponsored, but I wanted to give you a little like review because we've used him and I love him. So again, we named him Taco. His real name is M Tiny, and I have a discount code and a link for you in the description box. He, I was surprised when I looked up how much he was. He's only $99 and he does so much. And I was thinking, wow, for a coding robot, $99, that's an amazing deal. So if, <laughs> so, so if you're a teacher who wants to add fun into your classroom, do a little STEM in there, or if you're not a teacher and you just know a little one who is like five, six, seven, eight, I think even, you know, up to eight, maybe even nine years old, they would like this. It's super fun, let me show you. He's so funny, every time I like move him or do something, he does something different. His little eyes. So again, he has this little remote, he can be moved like a joystick or you can tap the code. He's giving me little battery eyes cause his battery is low, but I wanted to say I love how like well thought out and detailed he is. Even the charging cord has a piece for both the remote and for him. And it's got little, it has little pictures on there. Like how high quality is that? Probably don't care about the charging cord. Okay. So I gave my kids the demo of it yesterday, kind of with everyone on the carpet to get them super interested, uh, which was really easy. And then today during centers, today's Friday. So we finish any work we need to finish and then they can do computers. So I just called students over to the library while the rest of the class was on computers over there. And I kind of decided that the library was going to be his home because it's a nice place that's kind of like blocked in and protected. And it's also right by my small group table where you're sitting right now. So then I can always like look over and kind of manage it if I need to. So with M-Tiny, you get this little book and it's kind of like a challenge book. Um, so the first challenge, which is kind of what me and Kenzie did yesterday, is we put this together and it shows you a picture of what it's supposed to look like. For my group that usually needs a little bit more help, I call them over first and I kind of talk to them about like how many puzzle pieces does it have? Where do we get them? How do we fit them together? Kind of just like basic things and help them set it up and kind of see how they did and then they coded it together to get to the bamboo and then to get to the book and finally to get to the bed so I'm gonna build the first challenge and kind of show you how it works Okay, so this is kind of um, how my kids did it. I had the puzzle pieces over here. I had them all sit on this side. That way they'd all be looking at um, the puzzle the same way. And then I had the coding pieces over here. So after they built the puzzle and they checked it, and you can see we're on carpet right now and it doesn't lay perfectly flat, but his little wheels roll over it. So it's totally fine. For most of them, I put M Tiny on the starting one like that. Let's turn them on. And then they need to build the code. This piece straight the finish. So you can put in the code by tapping like kind of like the start button, then the direction, and then the green button to have him do one continuous code. Or you can just tap, let me get a better angle. So you could just keep tapping it and he would move just by using this input right here. There's like a sensor. So he talks so much. There's like a sensor on the bottom or you can do kind of the continuous code by pressing the yellow direction, direction, and the green, and then he'll go. So one, two, forward. So I think that's a really cool differentiation you could do where you could just have them tap the arrows and then not do the continuous code if you wanted to. And he also, anytime he lands on one of these special squares, he does something fun. So let's move him to the bed so you can see that. He's sleeping, is that not so cute? For a couple of my groups, look, you can see his battery face. 
He says low batteries and that's so cute. So for a couple of my groups, what I did was instead of putting him like that in the direction that he needs to go, I turned him to the side and had them do the code. They were like, okay, we have the right code. So then they did it and he, <laughs> And he goes off the puzzle and I was like, okay, so why do you think that happened? And they're like, oh, cause he's turned the wrong way. So they fixed him and turned him back. So there's lots of other pieces um, that would be great. I think some of my kids would be able to understand that if you put this here, he would do it three times or even once they tried it out, they would figure that out. Um, but you'd have your little parentheses for the coat there. So again, with the controller, you can use the joystick. You can use um, this little sensor at the bottom, which is great because you just have to tap it lightly. Like they don't have to press it super hard, just like a little tap. So that was challenge number one. Um, and as you can see, it is super fun, super cute. The kids loved it. I think the hardest thing is going to be um, taking turns, which great life skill, great life skill that they need to practice anyway, right? So I really love that you can just tap the code like this and he'll move, or you can do the continuous code with them, or you could have them use the joystick if they're not ready to code yet. Um, but I think all of my kids got it on the first try, so love that. So I'll show you a couple of other really cool things that he does. These are the grass puzzle pieces, um, and they have the whole challenge book for them. If you think your kids might be like super rough with like the pages in this book, you could even laminate them and maybe put them on a ring or like bind it which might be nice. Um, but he also has different characters that he can be. He can be the dog, a cat. There's like a chicken. And I didn't put those out yet, but they are really fun. He can take on different characters and he has little masks that are super adorable. But he also has a little town that he can go explore in. So when you do the town, you use the joystick. He can be a doctor. So when he goes over the ambulance, he's a doctor. When he goes over the police station, he is a policeman and has to catch these, I think they're robbers, I'm not sure. And then you can make your own town and have him explore. Here's some ideas for them, which is nice. And I played around with the town yesterday and it's super cool. So let's change this to a town. Here's my little town. This took me like three minutes to put together. So for them, it would take a little bit longer, which is great. All of the puzzle pieces have identifiable little features on them. And this is just like the flip side to this. So dual purpose. This piece at the top has the little books, or I think those are books, yeah. So then they know like which piece it goes to. So this is the town. We'll turn him back on and we'll put him in the middle. Okay, let's turn him down actually. So on this map, um, you're just gonna use the joystick to kind of move him around. It would be easier for the kids if they were behind it because to move him forward, you have to press the forward on the remote. Like you can't pull it towards you, um, which that's just problem solving. So if we take him to the police station, we'll turn him. So that's what he does when he finds him. The other cool thing is, this is the road. This is not the road. So if I try to move him forward, he bounces back. Like, I'll take him this way. Forward. Can't go that way. You have to make sure he's like on the road. The other one I think is pretty cool is the hospital. So I swapped out the police station for the hospital and the sick people are right here. So I'll show you what that looks like. He's an ambulance, so cute. And then here's the sick people. Oh, I ran into the wall. Here's the sick people. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of how I'm storing him. I'm storing all of the little coding pieces together, the booklet, and then all the puzzle pieces here. And then he is gonna sit, I haven't turned that off. He's gonna sit in this little bag. So the first couple of times that they use this, probably even, maybe all next week, and we only have like three weeks of school left, I will be in the center with them and kind of just observing them, like not really helping, but just kind of like being there, making sure that they're using it the right way. But then after that, I think what I might do, just give them the puzzle pieces and the little challenge book. And then when they're done with the challenge, I can just give them 
the little robot that way it's more I don't know I just don't want them to be like too rough with it at first because it's so special I don't want them like to fight over it so I think if I say build your challenge and then when you're ready like I'll give you the robot to do that way they're not just like playing with him instead of like doing the challenges I don't know we'll see how it goes I'll keep you updated but I'm really excited to have him in our classroom I do have the link again in my description box and a code for you to save some money but he is super super affordable to begin with so it almost makes me want to get another one I won't but it almost does. <laughs> also, there's other things you can do with him. The puzzle is really fun, but he has these little like card games. Like I played with this one yesterday with Kenzie and it's, it's a piano. If you tap the piano at the top, wait. Oh, <laughs> I was like, why isn't it working? I didn't turn the robot on. That's where the sound comes from. So FYI, he is the speaker. There's not a speaker in the remote. Um, so you just tap the keys or the keyboard if you want the piano and it'll vibrate and let you know that you did it. And then can you hear him? And then if you tap the cat. He also has a little golf game where you literally have to swing the controller like a Wii controller to get him to the finish line, which is fun. So there's turning him off. Um, he's very talkative. There's lots of super fun things you guys can do in your classroom. So I highly, highly, highly recommend picking this up if you want some sort of STEM activity in your classroom. If not this year, definitely, definitely next year. Or add it to your wish list, add it to your donors choose. So many different ways you can get it. So that's everything I wanted to share with you this week. Um, summer is coming up. So if there's any videos that you wanna see or things that you want me to talk about, let me know in the comments down below so I can start planning some summer content. I am not the kind of person who is good at planning planning content to film. I know I'm the worst, but if there's something you want to see, let me know because I'm trying to be better about that. I am coming this week to film our end of the year prep video. So kind of getting ready for the end of the year and sharing all the activities that we're going to do and all my fun outfits and ideas and things for the kids. So be looking forward to that. Make sure you're subscribed if you are not already. Thank you so much for joining me for this vlog and I will see you in the next video. Let's just appreciate the fact that I actually hung it back up.